project is studying the relationship between humans and robots. Professor Okada specializes in robots and cognitive science, the study of forms and behavior that make people want to communicate with robots. Here's one example. See the way the robot wobbles a bit, as if it's struggling to stand. This makes it look vulnerable, and people naturally want to reach out and help it. One of the defining things about robots is that they're self-sufficient. They can act and move without human assistance. But we think it makes a robot more interesting if it appears to be a little vulnerable and in need of help. See how awkwardly it moves? The wobbly movement is the important point. We put springs into the vertebrae to create this action, which is intended to make it seem alive. Projecting a sense of vulnerability like it does, in fact, makes the robot much more appealing to people. Our mind goes, this robot isn't human, but it doesn't feel like a machine either. Instead, we start to see it as a completely new life form. By walking awkwardly, the robot shows itself to be weaker than us. Such revealed weakness causes us to develop a deeper emotional connection with it, says Okada. To demonstrate this theory, for the past three years he's been carrying out a rather unique project. It involves the use of these trash cans, which in fact are robots. What is the aim of the project? We're going to make a trial to see how children react towards this robot trash can. When it's stationary, it's just an object. But once you see it start to move, it seems to take on a life of its own. I'm really interested in what effect this will produce in the children. The trash can is equipped with an artificial intelligence system and it has sensors to search for litter as it moves around. Let's see what happens when these robots are placed in a crowd of children. children's behavior tell you? The children are being quite boisterous. They aren't showing any respect to the robots. Some of them are hitting and shaking them, while others watch from a safe distance. They're trying to figure out what they are. I'm interested in how children regulate the physical and emotional distance between themselves and the robots. I'm also watching how the way the robots interact with them influences how they think about the robots. What do the children think of the trash can robots? They can move around and search for trash, but there's nothing they can do when they find some. See how it looks down as if asking for help. By seeming weak, 
these robots inspire people to reach out and respond. Professor Okada's vulnerable robots may well be the best able to establish a close relationship with humans. Fascinating stuff. The trash box is really cute. It's adorable. What do you think? When something as cute as this asks you to dispose of the trash properly, I think even litter bugs would think twice about littering. I think it's a great idea to start with children, so when they grow up, they'll already know the right thing to do. Mm, yes, that would definitely be a good influence. It's as if the robot is helping to educate the children. It's quite fascinating. Mm. Yeah. And it's not just a one-way process. Watching the way the children interacted with the trash box, it made me feel that in order to ensure robots and people will get along, it's important to create systems that encourage both sides to help each other out. I felt there was a good relationship between the children and the robots. Those trash cans aren't just cute, they're providing a social service, encouraging children to pick up trash and avoid littering. In order to promote communication between robots and people, it's important to remove complicated barriers and make things as simple as possible. The simpler we make it, the easier it becomes to feel a sense of connection toward the robots. I definitely agree with that. What sort of future do you see for robotic design? I'm not that interested in more advanced functions. I'm more interested in designing robots to fit in as well as possible with their surrounding environment. In other words, you're saying you have to think of the overall environment whenever you design something. Your latest work is a very interesting installation. Uh -huh. Is this it? Yes, I created this habitat that artificially replicates a natural habitat. And then I arranged robot birds within the trees. Matsui says his installation shows the future of robot design. His bird robots are extremely simple. All they do is turn from side to side. But the way they blend in naturally with their surrounding flowers and trees conveys his ideal of a future in which humans no longer use machines to try to control their environment, but instead respect and coexist with nature. This is symbolic of my approach. Instead of using one amazing cutting-edge robot, I used a number of quite simple small robots placed strategically so as to fit in naturally and not destroy their environment. This reflects my firm belief that it's increasingly important for society to work as a whole to conserve our own environment. Talking with you today has completely changed my idea of what robots will look like in the future. I can see that people and robots will interact on a much closer level and communicate like friends. Matsui-san, I'm definitely going to be following your work. Thank you for coming today. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs> We're seeing many new ideas for robots that can play a role in society. Palro was designed to communicate by singing and dancing. He's become very popular with certain groups of people. Palro has learned how to endear himself to the elderly and is now bringing comfort and cheer to people living in nursing homes. As the residents join Palro in song and dance, they develop bonds of friendship with him and with each other. Although still in the stage of clinical trials,
Calro is showing great promise for Japan's aging society. <laughs> With Palette, Matsui is introducing robots into society via the world of commerce. While Professor Okada is seeking ways in which robots and humans can help each other. Robots that play useful roles in society. Robots that heal and care for us. Design is making a vital contribution as we move forward to a better world where robots and people coexist in harmony. Thank you.